Good morning, Kimcom. Welcome back from spring break. That was probably a little loud. I apologize, but I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. I'm recharged, and I know we're online, and that's not... Some of you love that, and some of you probably hate that, and that's okay. Um, I prefer to see you face-to-face. -face. Gotta be honest, I miss you guys. I really wish we were together right now. Um, I appreciate the back-and-forth banter, and that's harder to do when we're not in the same room together. Um, but I did have a good spring break. Took some pictures of some bluebirds and some aeroplanes um, from my backyard. And I, uh, I, got, I pulled a tree out of the ground. The wind blew it down and we pushed it the rest of the way and then I cut it up with a handsaw because I'm a man. And I lit it on fire because I'm a man, okay? <laughs> So I had a super eventful spring break, much better than, you know, going to a beach. I mean, it's stupid. Um, so I, I was, you might have noticed, the la I was sick at the end of, before spring break, and I noticed I didn't put myself on camera. I, it was a little rough. I was, I was trying to get you guys work, but I wasn't feeling great. So I was trying to, but I feel lots better now. I'm good. Um, yeah, so things are better. Um, just a couple, like these are announcement type things. First, I am entering grades. They are being entered. I'm not putting in Z's if you don't turn them in because currently there are no deadlines. I am not saying like this must be done this date. If so I've had emails from people that are like, oh, I didn't get to this, I apologize. I'm like, it's fine. Get it to me when you get it to me. I would. Don't take that as, oh, I never have to do this. I don't know what the evaluation at the end of the fourth quarter is going to look like. Okay, we have no idea. They don't even, the administration doesn't even know. Just know your best bet right now is to stay on top of things, keep working through things. Okay, um, but if you need to like stop, if you're sick, let me know that, but and you can make it up in later time. That stuff is still available and open at any point in time. You can go back and look at it before, before spring break. Um, third thing, I'm going to slow down a little. Um, we want I want to make sure that I'm giving you the appropriate amount of stuff. And I know that you have other teachers, and it's just there will be a little more pacing here that's a little slower. That's my goal. Um, there's still going to be quizzes. There might be tests, which would just be like longer Google Form quizzes. But it's the same idea. Um, we're kind of getting to the end of this section, so I might make a little longer um, evaluation, and there will be a grade for that. Um, but don't freak out about that stuff. Everything's open note. You can go back and look at the videos. There's going to be a review packet with the key posted. Like, you're going to have all the resources you need. You just need to make sure you're doing your due diligence to make sure that stuff's taken care of. And then the, finally th the final thing is, I think I'm going to start doing Zoom office hours so that I'm just going to be in a Zoom meeting. I'm going to post the link, and then you can come ask a question real quick and be there like 30 seconds and say, hey, I don't understand this. I can write it out and show you with a screen share, and then you can leave, okay? Um, so I, just something like that to kind of it'll help me get contact with people, but it also helped me like, make sure you guys understand what's going on. It will not be a requirement, but um, it'd be a good way to like get some questions answered, okay? All right, with that being said, let's review where we've been before spring break. All right, we've been talking about petroleum um, and how petroleum is made underground and we get it out of the ground. It's like I got all these fractions, right? All these different gases and liquids and solids that are in that petroleum and we separate them out with boiling points. All right, we've talked about this. All right, before you left for spring break, we talked about two naming systems. We talked about the covalent naming system and the alkane naming system. Alkanes are just for hydrocarbons, which means you're gonna have carbon and hydrogen in some ratio. Covalent naming systems could be any non-metal. So you could have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, um, I'm missing a bunch, phosphorus, sulfur, bromine, all those are um, covalent, are non-metals, which means they could be in covalent structures. So we can have things like this, okay? And with this naming system, if there's only one of the first element, we just list that element, so this would be phosphorus. 
And then with the second one, we have five, so we use the prefix for five, which is penta. And this would be penta oxide because we change the ending to IDE. Okay, we also have something like N2O5, which would be dinitrogen because there's two nitrogen, and penta oxide. Okay, so these prefixes are mono, di, tri, tetra, penta. Okay. Those are the prefixes that go with covalent naming system. An alkane naming system, the whole, first of all, the hydrogens will always be twice plus two. Okay, so if I have two carbons, to get my number of hydrogens, I'm gonna double that and then add two, which would be two times two is four, and then if we add two, that's six, okay? So that means this structure would have two carbons and then one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens around that. You can kind of see how that works, okay? And then this is a different naming system that's purely based on the number of carbons. The prefix for two is F. So this would be ethane. Remember the prefixes for the alkanes would be meth, F, prop, butyl, okay? Those are the ones that we're looking for there. So there's two different prefix systems. By the way, I'm gonna give you those prefix systems on quizzes and tests and things like that, okay? But that's kind of the, the main thing we kind of like learned other than the facts about petroleum before spring break, okay? Um, let's, so now we're kind of moving on. So guess, here's the thing. Alkanes get more complicated than that, okay? They're not always just straight carbon chains and like neat and tidy and everything works out perfectly and like the, we have the hydrogens all around. There's these things called branching alkanes. Okay, we're going to learn how to name them today. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's when you have an alkane and a branch comes off that alkane. Okay, <laughs> makes sense, right? So let's take a look. All right, up until this point, all we've done is straight chain alkanes. We look at the carbon atom and we link one or two carbons together and we name it based on how many carbons are in that straight chain, okay? We've talked about this, we just did, all right? Um, a branched alkane is when one carbon is bonded to three or four other carbons, but it's coming off of one of the middle carbons. So this is actually a really good slide to spend some time on because you can kind of see. These first three, four, excuse me, here we've already dealt with. Methane, ethane, propane, butane. Meth is the prefix for one, eth is the prefix for two, prop is the prefix for three, and butane or but is the prefix for four. Okay, we've seen all of those. They're straight chain alkanes. But look down here, okay? Now we have a straight chain and then there's this branch coming off of it. There's this straight chain and there's a branch coming off of it. This has like two branches technically, okay? And then here's a straight chain of pentane. Pentane would be five carbons. And then this would be a different way to write that, okay? So we're just trying to give you, we're, we'll get to naming these here in a second. But for right now, you can see the difference between a straight chain alkane and one that has a branch, okay? Notice that this is butane because it has one, four, two, one, two, three, four, I can count, I promise. One, two, three, four carbons. And this right here has four carbons as well. Okay, this just rearranged in a different way. When we have that, we call those isomers. An isomer is when you have the same structural formula, or excuse me, you have the same molecular formula, but the structure is different, okay? This often results in a different boiling point, okay, or a lower boiling point. Because if you think about it, if we have butane here, which has one, two, three, four carbons, these molecules would stack on top of each other fairly well, okay? And therefore, they're gonna be attracted to each other if we had two butane molecules. But because of the branch, this does not stack together with other molecules very well. And therefore, it's not as attracted to other molecules, and it's more likely to separate from that molecule, therefore lowering the boiling point, okay? It's, we don't have to add as much heat to get them to move to separate from one another because there's lower intramolecular forces. We'll talk a little bit about that um, later on, okay? But you can see okay, they have the same number of carbons. They have the same number of hydrogens. These are both C4H10, but they're not the same structure, all right? So how do we name these things? 
Um, we just did this, okay? Um, it's on the last page, all right? But it should look like this. We have C4H10. There's two different ways to draw those things, okay? These are called isomers, right? Not isotopes, that's different. Isomers, same formula, different structure. Okay, we could do the same thing here. There's multiple ways we could do this here. Notice this is pentane because it has five carbons, all right? Here's one way to draw a isomer of pentane. Here's another way with five carbons and two, or there's two branches. But once again, these are all C5H12. It's just they're arranged in a different way. All right. So now that we've got that down, we understand what maybe a branched alkane looks like. Let's try to name them. Okay, the first thing we want to do is determine the name of the parent chain, which will be the longest continuous chain. A lot of times the picture will be like, this will show this through the middle, okay? But it doesn't always have to be that way, okay? It may appear to be a straight line, but it doesn't need to be. Um, and then you're going to determine the prefix... Um, based on the number of carbons in that straight chain. And then we're going to add the ending of ane. So really, the first half of this is simply just naming the, what we call the parent chain with the correct term. So if the parent chain has three carbons in it, propane. If it has four carbons in it, butane. Five carbons in it, pentane. Okay, same as before. The branch is when things get a little different. To name the branch... Okay, we need to first, we got to find the branch, and we got to figure out how many carbons are on that branch, all right? Then we're going to use the same prefixes, okay? And we're going to put a YL at the end, and we're going to use a number to tell where it's located, okay? We will get to this down here. This is when you have more than one branch, okay? I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that right now okay we're going to focus on things that have one branch um so let's look it would look like this three methyl pentane i would advise you to focus on the parent chain first this is telling you that the parent chain has five carbons pent so the parent chain one two three four five carbons okay then it's telling you, this three here, that's telling you which carbon the branch is coming off of. So if you would number these carbons, one, two, three, four, five, it's saying that the branch is coming off of carbon number three. And then we have methyl. Meth is the prefix for one. That's telling you, okay, methyl, the branch will always end in YL. So it's telling you you have one carbon coming off of the third carbon of the parent chain. So that's going to look like this. And that and then everything else, you got to remember that carbon will make four bonds. So there would be hydrogens everywhere else. Okay? And it would look exactly like this. Okay? Just like we drew it, right? You got one carbon a branch with one carbon coming off that middle chain. Let's try another one. So this is two methyl pentane. I don't even have to draw this for you. What changed? Okay, this is three methyl pentane. So what changed to two methyl pentane? The number, right? So it's coming off of a different carbon. It's the same branch, methyl, one carbon, but it's coming off the second carbon. So it would look like this. We got one, two, three, four, five in our parent chain and the branch is coming off of the second carbon okay pretty straightforward all right let's try a different one this is where we get a little more complicated and the reason is because of the dye okay focus on what you know first the parent chain is always at the end butane one two three four but is the prefix for four then it says 2, 3. Some of you can already figure this out, I bet. Okay, we got 1, 2, and 3. And it's dimethyl. Okay? What that means is we have a branch off the 2 
and a branch off the three, and there are two di methyl groups. Boom, boom. Okay? And then we would put hydrogens around all of those. They drew it a different, a little different, okay? Because they put them in different directions. That's fine. Just as long as they're on the right carbons. Okay? That's it. So at this point in time, you have like, I think there's like eight branched alkanes that you need to name at the end of this little activity here on, uh, where are we at? 13.8, okay? The rest of this week, just so you know what it's going to look like, we got one more note section. I'll probably, there'll be another activity. There might be, uh, qu there'll be a quiz at the end of the week for sure, okay? And it might be a little longer kind of reviewing more topics, Okay? But that's kind of where we're heading right now. Um, I miss you guys. I hope uh, you're doing well and you're staying healthy. Be good to somebody today. We will see you later. Have a good one. Bye.